This is the Detroit Sports Podcast Network. At the end of a hard week, it's great to sit down and take some time off and watch some football. Game-winning touchdowns on two-minute drives, running backs racing down the sidelines with no one to stop them. There's nothing else like the NFL, and there's no better way to make the games even more exciting than to bet on them. So do the smart thing and go to mybookie.ag. No one gives you more ways to win than they do. MyBookie's got the fastest payouts and better lines than any other sports book. Don't forget, where you're betting is just as important as who you're betting on, and mybookie.ag is the best in the business. Do the smart thing. If you're going to bet this football season, bet with MyBookie. If you're the kind of guy that likes to bet a little and win a lot, try a parlay. If all your picks come through, you'll multiply your winnings. And no matter how you bet, the NFL season is the best time of year. Join now and MyBookie will double your first deposit. Use promo code DETROIT100 to activate the offer. That's promo code D-E-T-R-O-I-T-100. Visit MyBookie.ag today. You play, you win, you get paid. Fellas, I want to tell you about a product that can improve your performance in the bedroom. And what better way to improve the quality of your life than to please the woman of your dreams? Blue Chew brings you the first chewable with the same FDA-approved active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, so you know they work. Blue Chew is the fast and easy solution for any man looking to enhance their performance and step up their game. You don't have to be one of those guys that finishes quickly, or you don't have to be one of those guys that, at the end of the day, regrets not having a great sex life. Blue Chew is prescribed online and shipped straight to your door in a discreet package, so no in-person doctor's visit, no waiting in the pharmacy, and best of all, no more awkwardness. They're made in the USA, and since Blue Chew prepares and ships direct, they're cheaper than a pharmacy. Right now, we've got a special deal for our listeners. Visit BlueChew.com and get your first shipment free when you use our special promo code DETROIT. All you got to do is pay the $5 shipping and handling fee. Again, that's BlueChew.com. Promo code DETROIT to try it free. Blue Chew is the better, cheaper, faster choice, and we thank them for sponsoring the podcast. And guys, this episode of Tiger Soccer Trico and Company is brought to you by DC Sports at Lakeside Mall and Sterling Heights. Your source for all things authentic sports memorabilia and terrific autograph signing sessions, such as one that just happened this past weekend on this past Saturday featuring Tiger's rookies, Jake Rogers, and Travis DeMerit. Also, DC Sports has a private signing with the Worm. Dennis Rodman coming up, a back-to-back champion with the Detroit Pistons. Also, a signing with members of the 1984 Bless You Boys World Series Championship squad and Jack Morris, Dan Petrie, and others. For more info on all of their upcoming signings and for much more regarding DC Sports, please follow Detroit City Sports on Twitter at DC Sports Detroit. And also make sure to check out their terrific website at DetroitCitySports.com. Hey, this is Brian Peña. I always join the Vito Vacas, the best Vacas in the United States. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the latest, the freshest edition of Tiger Stock with Chirko and Company. I am your host, Vito Geronimo Chirko, along to my usual psychic and broadcast partner and fun. That is a doc from Doc and Jack, John Charles McElroon. John, you are now a credentialed media member with the Detroit Lions, and you are loving life because of that. John, what's up, my man? Yeah, let me clarify. The network goes on. We are able to cover all the Detroit sports. We definitely are continuing our efforts to broadcast every single day, to put out podcasts, Vito. I think we're at around 1,600, 1,700 recorded podcasts. It's amazing what we've been doing. And yeah, we're going to continue. The network goes on, even though I'm covering the Lions specifically for Sports Illustrated. I've been proud to say that. And uh, But the network goes on. The Detroit Sports Podcast Network has partnered with Sports Illustrated, and it's a great feeling. And uh, I, I definitely, look, honestly, could I go into one sport football and cover it day in day out no i'm a guy that loves all the detroit sports the the red wings the pistons the tigers uh college sports so i'm more of a columnist type oh I like to, god yeah i like to roll around so should i <laughs> should i tweet out there that i'm an si columnist Can you would love to opine on many different topics that are related to detroit sports exactly so i can and you couldn't do it though see but but i give you credit for what you have accomplished now as a sports illustrated 
Detroit Lions writer. How about that? How does that sound to you, John? But you will still see me at Comerica Park because I love covering Detroit sports. I love going out there. I love finding out the stories, and I love providing guys like you an opportunity to go and uh, sit in the Detroit Tigers dugout and get quality interviews. And this week we got another one. It's great. Uh, We've had now a couple opportunities to interview the Detroit Tigers in the dugout, and we'll take advantage of it. Um, Yeah, but in terms of my reporting, look, I'll I'll be hyper-focused on the Lions for sure, but I love Detroit sports. I read every single day. I'm in the mix, and that's why you see me part of the Motor City Sports Rant, Tigers Talk, uh, Doc and Jock. I do a wrestling podcast because I have a lot of interest, and I got a lot of deep interest in the world of sports. That's why I'm on a lot of podcasts, but I think it's uh, reasonable. I'm not on for four hours a day. Half an hour. All you got to do is tolerate me half hour a day. That's all you really got to worry about, but uh, at the same time, you know, it's a good opportunity. It's been great for the network, and I think it'll just only expand our opportunities for coverage with the Tigers because they've been so gracious and so welcoming um, in terms of our ability to cover them. So, hey, I'll take advantage of every opportunity I can. So to say that, hey, you know, I could slap SI on your resume is unbelievable for me as well. Thank you very much. John Charles Macron officially has finally done something for me. After five years of being at the podcast network, and you were saying how we have to deal with you for a half an hour per day via whatever podcast it may be from the Detroit Sports Podcast Network. I can barely deal with you for much more than five minutes. Your <laughs> wife, Andrea, just told me she can barely deal with you for more than 10 minutes. So at least she can deal with you for a longer period of time than me. Vito, I'll say this. Uh, similar to Chris Illich when he spoke to the media last weekend, the Podcast Network is making progress. We and, keep and rolling progress, along. We keep rolling along. Even though we're not yet at the Podcast Network ready to spend a bunch of money yeah, I know on that. our talent, oh, God, I know that. we are making that progress. You know, look, we don't have 100 losses to our name, but look, you know, when the time comes, Vito, and that big sponsor comes in and drops that five-figure contract on us, potentially speaking, you may be the beneficiary if we don't ship you along. You know what I mean? Because we may have to make, you know, some roster moves, some tough decisions when that time comes, you know. Just when we're ready to win, might have to just uh, let you go there to uh, greener pastures. Or, uh, as we say, you know, cut you. Yeah, really just get fired. I'm not moving on. I'm just getting flat out fired. And do some Tigers individuals deserve to get fired? Well, they're not going to going into 2020, apparently. And according to the Tigers owner, Chris Illich, he's not going to be firing Ron Gardenhire. And Alavila got extended a long time ago now, around the 4th of July. So he's not going anywhere. And Tigers roll along. And you brought up Chris Illich made some comments now to the media after their team photo. And he brought up how really the Tigers are making progress. And then you look at their record, though, John, and the fans will as well, even more than us, and they see a 45-104 and record from the Tigers this season. Highly disappointing productivity and results on the Major League Diamond at Comerica Park all season long from our Detroit Tigers. Yet, he goes on to once again say about the progress part. And he, in direct quotes said here, open quotes, Great strides, close quote. So, I mean, he has officially come out and said the Tigers have made great strides in 2019. Have they really on the ball field with the Major League Club? The Major League Club is not, John. Answer is flat out no, because they haven't made much progress whatsoever. Now, if you bring up progress as an organization, sure, you probably have because of your guys at single A, at double A, and at triple A as well. But as a major league product, the team, you could argue, John, has taken steps back, not forward. Well, yeah, that was the line, I think, that really shocked a lot of people. And it irked a lot of people, too, when you look at the results from the team on the the ball diamond at Comerica Park this season. Organizationally, they have taken steps forward because there are identifiable talents. Now, the issue on the field is those that have been brought up. Let's just take a look at uh, Jamer Candelario. Guys like Joe Jimenez, they've been put in positions to play every day, and it just hasn't seemed like they've progressed or developed where they needed to be. Guys like Jake Rogers. Now, still his batting average is not significantly where it needs to be. So that is the current level of concern that fans have and the media that's observing is, okay, you've brought up a handful of guys that have been put on the major league roster. Now, 
does part of that have to do with being in a culture of losing or are they not as talented as we all think they are? But some of the guys that have been brought up have yet to really make their mark or show progression. So that's where a lot of the fear comes in. The hope comes in in that you know you got a lot of arms. You got a plethora of arms that could come in. But the the single greatest concern is when your position players come up, you got to have them hit. Do you have the the proper coaching? And so that's where I think uh, the fans that are listening are going, Chris, you know, potentially we may be wanting a complete overhaul of the coaching staff, the assistants, the the scouts, the those in the analytic department. So that's where a lot of the angst comes in. But I thought he brought a, a little bit of uh, levity, Chris Illich, that is, when he discussed that even his son is like, hey, we're not winning. And he had to tell his son, look, it's a process. And the part that I guess... Mr. Illich has that we have to kind of understand is what else is he going to say? Is he going to say, I think this is a complete uh, disaster and we're going to go in the backwards direction. He's trying to sell the fact that he believes in Alavila and he believes that the talent that he's gone out there and acquired and drafted will come in eventually in a year or two. And that he did say, remember, everything is said for a certain reason, Vito. He did say, Every team that wins, eventually speaking, is going to have to go out there and get the high-priced free agent. We will do that, but not right now. It's a process. So 2019 is a wash. Next year is going to be Next a wash. Next year is a wash too, baby. So I understand that process and why he said it. But yeah, no, this year on the field, the organization regressed in terms of at the major league baseball level. But in the minors, there's a lot to be positive about and a lot to look into. Also, I really think that he has advocated for Garden Hire and Avila returning because he doesn't want to pay for anybody else. I think it also speaks volumes about that. The Tigers' unwillingness to spend the dollar bill on players to upgrade the roster at the big league level, but also on the coaching staff and the front office staff as a whole. So because of that, as much as maybe Chris I is trying to sell that he's enjoyed the progress made through the help of Al Avila with the front office and Ron Garden here on the field as the skipper of the Detroit Tigers. I think a lot of it actually is predicated upon him being cheap and not wanting to spend big dollars on this team right now headed into 2020. Now, he did make the statement, though, that at some point, Tigers will be among the teams bidding on high-priced, high-end veteran free agents. Now, not going to be headed into this offseason, but here we go. Here's a direct quote from Chris I after the team participated in their annual photo shoot. He said, Al, as in Al Avila, the GM of the Tigers, and I have talked a lot about that. It is certainly part of the plan. When Al feels the time is right, he's going to have the resources to go out and address specific needs. It is undoubtedly part of our plan. So Chris I came out, told the media that, so we know once again he's not going to spend on free agents going into the offseason, this upcoming offseason. But I think after the 2020 season, he will. And they better. Because if they don't, and if they don't resemble some kind of competitiveness, some kind of a competitive ball club in 2021, well, not going to look good for Chris I. And the behind of Al Avila would definitely be on the line at that point. So where do you think, in terms of the organization, in terms of the hope that you have, do you say, okay, I'm going to hyper-focus on the pitchers? Or are there a couple guys that you say, okay, Jake Rogers, Willie Castro, those guys could be the centerpiece going forward. Where does the hope lie for you in terms of progress for the organization? I think these guys will end up making progress. It's just we haven't seen the progress yet from Jake Rogers and Willie Castro. Castro, I really believe in, and he's our guest on this week's episode of Tigers Talk. And he's a guy that could be a starter come 2021. And I have a projected roster, my extremely optimal version of that projected roster for the Tigers in 2021, plus an alternative version of that that I will maybe go into a little bit this week. But for sure, full-fledged release on next week's episode of The Pod. And Willie Castro definitely is in my vision for the Tigers in 2021. I think, at least as a backup, and the same can be said about Jake Rogers. Rogers, though, for sure has to turn it around at the plate. And I say that even more with him because he didn't show a lot of great signs at the plate in AAA and throughout his minor league career. Now, a little bit of pop, and I believe he still has four home runs for himself at the major league level this season. But I want to see more out of him in terms of productivity at the plate now. And hopefully he gets better this offseason. And, and then is a guy that can 
uh, be the Tiger starter at catcher by midway next season and then be the starter in 2021. But I have doubts about that, about him being the Tigers' long-term starter at that position because of his, his lack of hitting ability. Willie Castro, I think, will turn it around more easily at the plate. He's a guy that has hit in the past, hit at AAA Toledo, and uh, can field adequately enough and has worked on things defensively in recent memory and as recent as Saturday when I was at the ballpark with the Tigers' first base coach, Ramon Santiago, a former Tigers middle infielder and shortstop specifically as well, which is what Willie Castro has been playing with the Tigers at. And he could be, once again, the Tigers' long-term solution at shortstop. Just right now with how he's hitting and Jake Rogers is hitting, well, you have to question the long-term viability of those guys as starters at the major league level. But once again, I see guys, those two guys both, both more than likely being a part of the Tigers' 2021 roster. And Rodgers in a backup spot, Castro in a backup spot, and maybe even starting. But in terms of progress that the Tigers have made at the big league level this season, I'm disappointed with it, and Tigers fans as a whole, and I think on an organizational basis too, should be disappointed with the uh, progress made by the Tigers at the big league level this season. But at the farm system level, there are more positives. There are reasons to be proud of the Tigers' progress. But that's it. At the major league level, you can't say you can be extremely proud with the progress made by the Tigers. And that's an organizational-wide thing and and something you can pinpoint on Alavila, but also Ron Gardenhire, maybe. And I wanted to bring up this really quick, too, regarding Gardy. He has said that you know, Illich obviously has come out, has supported him. Alavila has given him support as well, and they want him back for next season, 2020, that is. But Gardenhire has brought up that he is adamant about getting his coaches protected for next season, making sure they're brought back as part of his staff for next season. So that could be something that if the Tigers don't follow suit with bringing back it sounds like the entire coaching staff for Ron Garden hire that Gardy could make the decision then, John, to not return as Tiger skipper for 2020. And that's something really big that I had to bring up there. So in terms of your experience, what was it like going down to check out the Baltimore game and uh, interviewing Willie Castro? Tigers and O's, not the greatest two teams right there. Uh, well, the two worst in big league baseball right now. But Willie Castro was fun to talk to. He was uh, very engaging and told me about learning from Ramon Santiago, learning from others, and what he has to keep working on, and his hopes and aspirations as a big leaguer moving forward as well. Very fun combo with him, and uh, short and sweet, to the point, but I would say, yeah, once again, definitely he was engaging, and he talked not only about Ramon Santiago and what he's learned from him so far, but also about from his big league skipper, that is the aforementioned Ron Gardenhire, what he's learned from Miguel Cabrera so far as well. And it seems like this guy has his head on his shoulders. And once again, he could definitely be a member of the Tigers' long-term future. Now, before we get to the interviews, obviously, okay, there was uh, the matchup there versus the Orioles. You played four and uh, unfortunately did not go well. Split two, though. Yeah. Remember, you split two in the four-game series. Hey, well, a now, positive for the Tigers in the terms reason of I say, wins. But The reason I say it didn't go well was in order to earn the number one draft pick, you have to lose all four games. So it was a battle of uh, last place teams, lowly attended games at Comerica Park. I was kind of indeed hoping the Tigers would indeed lose all four, but they won two. So I was like, oh, of course the Tigers would win some games when now you're in the race for the overall number one draft pick in Major League Baseball. Tyler Alexander, though, in a positive note, pitched well on Monday, got the win, his first Major League win. Hey, accomplishment right there, and you got to give him some props for notching his first Major League victory. Yeah, but Vito, we also last week had the opportunity, you and I, after the Tigers talk recording, we checked out the Yankees and the Tigers, and uh, holy smokes. Great game. Best game this season to be at, and we were there as credentialed media members, and that was terrific. It was an unbelievable game. The, the Yankees and the Tigers were going back and forth. The Tigers, you know, last Tuesday got down uh, and were trailing 6 nothing, and we, we jokingly, done, I'm right? like, Vito, start writing, get writing, you know, it's time to get to work, and all of a sudden the Tigers clawed their way back. But, oh my goodness, throughout the course of that series, Vito, the Tigers just gave up so many home runs, and the Yankees have such a plethora of offensive talent. Wow. I mean, it seemed like Encarnacion, whenever he swung, he swung out of his shoes, and he just connected, and the ball just flies off of his bat. What an addition for the Yankees. What an unbelievable 
uh, athlete that the Yankees have. And indeed, the Yankees broke the single season record at Comerica Park that the Twins had set yep. previously against the Tigers yep. too at Comerica Park. It literally How about seemed that? like every five pitches a ball was flying out of there, and we were like, "Whoa, this is great!" And uh, it was an opportunity for you and I to share a, a great uh, baseball game, and we covered it. So. That was the fun time, and it was a definitely an opportunity to see the Detroit Tigers play well and get a victory. Uh, the rest of the series versus the Yankees, not so much. No, not as good. Obviously not as good, but at least they got one. They won that terrific game, had it come from behind. They won 12-11 to Tuesday night when we were there, and, and that played two on Thursday, and it fared that well. Uh, allowed 10 runs and 6 runs. They scored four in each game. They produced some offense in that series against the Yanks, which was great to see from the Tigers, uh, but really we're worried about the Tigers losing. Racking up those losses as much as possible to secure the number one overall spot in the Major League Baseball draft next summer. And that's the key for the Tigers at this point. We don't want to see them accumulate wins. Forget about that. That's just irrelevant at this point. You know, the Tigers racking up W's when they're with 104 losses already. The Orioles, by the way, are 49 and 101. So they trail the Tigers by three games for that worst record in Major League Baseball and subsequently that number one overall draft pick in next year's amateur draft. So we don't want the O's catching us for that. And that's why, like you said, John, you can bring up that as fans, we can be disappointed with the Tigers taking the two in this past series over the weekend with the O's. Now we just want to see them continue to lose and wrap up that number one draft pick. Because for the Tigers right now, It's about the long-term future and viability of this franchise. And they're going to get good only through building up their farm system. And that means continuing to draft well and draft well throughout the entire draft, not just in the first or second round. And then building up these farm players that the Tigers already have. These guys have to continue to make progress. All the pitchers, Franklin Perez, Bo Burrows, Alex Fajardo, Matt Manning, Casey Mize, all have to keep taking steps forward. The hitters do as well, and for sure the hitters do. Daz Cameron, Jake Rogers now with the big league club, as you said, a guy that signed autographs at DC Sports, our fine sponsor at the network last weekend. Willie Castro, our guest on this week's episode, as I said, has to keep making progress as a big league player. Uh, At the plate right now, you can definitely pinpoint with him where he has to continue making progress, but also defensively. And all these guys, we can go on ad nauseum about all these guys, John, and how it is so darn vital for them to continue making progress. And if they do next year and beyond, well, then we can say, hey, Chris, maybe you were right about this organization. Maybe this organization actually is making progress progress. All right, after we show love to one of our other sponsors here at the network, Vito will play his interview that he conducted from the Tigers dugout with Willie Castro, and then we'll wrap up this edition of Tigers Talk. And John, with that being said, one of our other fine sponsors at the DSP Network and of Tigers Talk on a weekly basis is the Detroit Sports Commission. And you can follow the DSC on Twitter and on Instagram at DET Sports. And also make sure to check out their terrific website today and every single day of the week, every single day that ends in day or ends in Y at DetroitSports.org. And now, here is my interview with Tigers rookie shortstop, Willie Castro. How exciting is it to finally be up with the big league ball club? I was really excited, you know, it's a dream come true. Something that I worked for for a long time, like the past eight years, and something to try to focus and just stay here for a long time. What did you learn from playing at AAA Toledo for Doug Mankiewicz? What did he teach you about the game of baseball? Well, he's a really good manager. Um, he, he told me a lot of stuff that, you know, Stuff that makes sense, stuff that, that he really knew from back then when he used to play. He just told me he believed in me, you know. He he um he know he told me I was a really good player, I could be a a really good um, minor league player. Just try to focus on the on the stuff that you gotta get better in, and you will be alright. So I want to bring up your first base coach here at the Tigers, Ramon Santiago, who played shortstop for the Tigers himself, just like you are right now. Have you picked his brain? And you know, if so, what have you learned from him so far about playing shortstop and just hitting at the big league level as well? Yeah, um, he just told me everywhere you go, it's going to be the same baseball. You know, um, 
he just say, you know, the stuff that I gotta gotta get better on uh, my defense. And right now, I feel I feel way better, uh, more comfortable because I was trying to like do too much. And um, but now I'm like um, trying to move in my feet, move my feet. That's what that was the struggle that I had a little bit in Toledo, that I wasn't attacking the ball and stuff. But right now, I feel way better. And he he just telling me that he he believes in me to just keep working and I will be all right. How about now picking the brain of Miguel Cabrera? What have you learned from him so far? You know, he's a really, um, he's a guy that just looks for one pitch, you know, like to just try to not miss that pitch. And I just try to learn, like, for everybody. I try to learn a little bit, trying to, like, every day, how I say, um, just trying to get 1% better every day every time I come out here. You know, like a few weeks ago, I was, like, trying to do too much. And uh, now I feel way more comfortable. And these last few games, uh, I've been feeling, I've been looking at the ball really well. And it's something I got to keep working on. Your skipper here with the Tigers, Ron Gardenhire. What has he taught you so far about just the overall game of baseball and playing at this level and all the intensity, the mental aptitude that you need to have as well? The first thing he told me when I got called up, it was, hey, just try to do your thing. Don't try to do too much, you know. That's all he told me, and he knows the kind of player I am. And he's a really good manager, too. He's been helping me a lot, too, in my defense and stuff. What are your hopes and aspirations moving forward as a big league ball player? Being an everyday player, you know, just trying to, you know, make my team win every day and just come out here and try to get better and keep learning because we will never keep uh, learning. And it's something that I always will keep in mind, like try out here and get better. So what's something unique about you that many people do not know? It can be baseball related or non-baseball related, Willie? No, baseball, you know, I come from a family that they all play baseball. And, you know, we out here you know, just trying to, some of them, they, my dad didn't make it to the big leagues. My my, um, my uncles didn't make it to the big leagues, but I had a goal in my mind that I was going to make it for them, you know, and I'm here. It's making a dream come true. Really quick, anybody trying to get here to this level that you're at right now, at the big league level, what would be your word of advice to them, especially the youth, those guys that are young ball players right now? Uh, the biggest thing that I always keep on my mind, you know, for them to that, that it's going to help them. I think it's something to be positive. Be positive. Uh, believe in yourself and knowing your abilities, knowing your talent. It's something I've been keeping me way better player in the course of the years. And it's something I always keep in mind. Try to, like, focus on to get better and trust in yourself. Willie, thanks for all the time and best of luck to you, too, the rest of the way this season. Thank you. And back here on Tiger Stock of Chirco and Company, which I believe is episode 203 of the podcast. Great interview there. Once again, short and sweet with the Tigers shortstop, Willie Castro. And once again, a guy that I believe can be a long-term member of this ball club and, and definitely as an organization right now, John. Tigers are hoping he ends up being a long-term member of the ball club. And not only that, but the Tigers starting shortstop on a regular basis one day. And now a treat before we end the podcast. You had a chance to sit down with your father and he reflected with you regarding what he thinks in terms of which team, the 2003 Tigers or this version, perform worse. Because he's in a unique spot to be able to compare, I think it provides great insight. We love having him as part of the podcast. It'll be great. First time ever, by the way, from my dad, my Padres, I like to call him. And uh, great to feature his thoughts on comparing the 03 club with this current version of the Tigers. Enjoy, guys. Glad to have my dad here for this week's episode of Tiger Stock with Chirco and Company for the first time ever on episode 203 of the podcast. And dad, I have you here today to discuss the differences and similarities between the 03 Tigers that lost 119 and this year's team that has lost already north of 100 and might lose 110, 112, you name it at this point. What do you see as the glaring similarities and differences right off the bat? First of all, I'd like to say that it took to episode 203 to get me on the show, but anyhow, Similarities? Well, I would say similarities would be <laughs> ineptness and the lack of talent kind of rears its ugly head. I mean, what you're seeing now, just like you saw in 03, is like a, a, a almost like a minor league team playing Major League Baseball. So it's kind of alarming that 16 years later, you would always hope you would never see the day that you'd see this ineptness, and here we are. And now you've seen it again, and you're thinking, hopefully you'll never see it again, but who knows? I mean, I think they're going to lose 100 games next year. Well, yeah, the thing is, maybe they haven't even bottomed out officially, because next year could be as bad, maybe even worse. 
And now 03, looking back at them really quick, they still had Craig Monroe and Brandon Inge, Ramon Santiago, Jeremy Bonnerman, guys that did contribute to the 06 team that won the AL pennant. Are there any guys that you think could be on this team two, three years from now that really contribute to a team that becomes a contender? Well, I think on this team, you, you've had some ups and downs this year, some certain players, but, you know, I, I'm going to go on, you know, maybe Jake Rogers down the road. Um, Victor Reyes has taken a step in the right direction this year. He can run, field a little bit, and he's hit almost 300. The pitchers, I mean, I looked at the, uh, the stats the other day. I think there was, what, 40 guys that have pitched this year. I mean, the positives there, they're not, <laughs> they're not many. Uh, the, the, the pitchers that, you know, in uh, 03, I think they had some pitchers already here that were going to kind of, you know, perform for the next few years. I don't think you even have that other than maybe Boyd. So it's even more inept. It seems like it's more inept right now because you don't see any bright spots that are here. Like the call-ups, I think, that were supposed to be here this year aren't even here. So that's alarming in itself. So now the big question is, is who's worse between those two teams? And I think you're getting at that you think this year's team could be worse because you don't see many guys, if any guys, really contributing to the big league club two to three years from now. I'm going to go with this year, and I, I even though they're going to win more games. And I think they couldn't afford any injuries, and they got them right away. Even though they got Cabrera and, you know, less than state, I just think this year they, you know, you got to remember they had Trammell as manager. So that... He was on a learning curve himself. He had a really good veteran manager, I think pretty good veteran manager, Gardenhire, so who knows how to handle pretty much more, you know, more capable of handling a situation like this. So they might be getting a few extra wins because of that. But basically this year's been trial and error, and I, you know, I, I, I would have to say technically this year is worse. So with that being said, you know, Ron Gardner, the Tiger skipper right now, is a respected veteran manager, managed the Twins now with the Tigers, hasn't won many games, obviously, his two years with the Tigers, has another year on his deal with the Tigers, though. Now, do you think he's a guy that could lead this team in the right direction moving forward? So into next year and beyond, is he the, the right guy to right this ship and get it moving in the right direction ultimately? Well, I, I think maybe, I don't want to say by default, but I couldn't even imagine a person that could be better suited for next year. I it'd be a I wouldn't even you know you could bring bring back Jim Leland and it it wouldn't be as good. So yes, to answer the question, Garden Hire should be the guy next year. He knows some of the players now. He kind of knows what they're gonna do. So right now he's a, a, a fit maybe by default, but you know, and with one year left. I mean, well, why change with a team that's maybe going to win, what, 65 next year? So I, I say keep it. Keep it the same. Now the Tigers' current GM, Al Avila, do you think he is the right man to lead the front office in the right direction moving forward? Well, he's, 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 uh, he's taking these little uh, step, stepping stones. You know, we thought the trade deadline was going to be a, a real thing, and then after it was all said and done, it really didn't matter. I mean, it was a couple things. They weren't going to get the value for Boyd and certain players. So that's a really good question. I think the off season is really going to um, uh, test his uh, ability to make some moves. Now, you know, you got to remember owner, ownership too. Like, what are they thinking? You know, I don't know. You know, Chris Illich might think that this is like, you know, nothing good's going to happen until twenty twenty one. So. You know, maybe I can wait another year and see what's going on. And but you know, you start losing fans, you start losing your fan base, especially the young younger people when you go through these years of losing. So I'd say keep Big Al and uh, let it ride one more year and see what he does in the off season. So you know, next year they got to have some sort of hope. Here's a big question for you: Who's your tiger? You know, they used to go with that as their slogan when they had all those great teams and whatnot and all these all-star players. Right now, not many guys to pick from that are really good contributing ball players. But who would you say is your Tiger at this point? Well, that's a good question. Another good question. I don't know. that that You know, I've seen some positives this year with a, a couple players, but, you know, Candelario's taking a step back. Um, they're finding out about, like, Lugo and... 
you know, guys they got in that the, the trade. Jake Rogers looks like he's hitting wise, not ready. Reyes is probably the only guy that's taken a step forward to the degree where you say next year he gets some PT, let him play, you know, let him start. I mean, how many guys can you actually say let him start? I mean, Jordy, Jordy Mercer won't even probably be here. Christian Stewart got hurt, so, you know, he's a possibility. But, uh, you know, what have you done for me lately? I'm going to go with Victor Reyes. And he's hit lately, too, and he looks like he could be the Tigers' starting center fielder next year and beyond, maybe, and maybe he's still here by 2021 and is a starter, but small sample size right now, obviously, out of him. And and there is Jacoby Jones, a guy that I know you don't like that much, but he could be in contention for that starting center field job as well next season. Now, going into the offseason, what would you like to see the Tigers do? Alavila and company in that front office, what kind of areas would you like to see them address this offseason? Well, I think, you know, they, I think they've already know uh, the answer to this, but what's the what's the timeline on these pitchers that we've been waiting for? I mean, is it worth moving on to them? I mean, Casey Mize probably should be here next year, no doubt. So after that, I mean, Bo Burrows and Manning and Funk Hosler and you know, that I, I think they have to make that decision like right from the get go next year. And then as far as position players, I think Al's got to make a couple uh, nifty moves and sign somebody with value that's willing to come here. Even if they have to overpay a little bit, it might be a a, a small free agent uh, deal. But I think they're a little desperate in finding somebody that's going to have to play, you know, or overpay for somebody that's decent. And, you know, decent's a, a, a wide... Uh, word to go by but yeah it's gonna have to be a move like that and uh because you know people are gonna be turned off and they're gonna stay turned off and nobody's showing up at the ballpark right now either now speaking of somebody that maybe could bring guys to the ballpark back in the day at least miguel cabrera any hope for him moving forward i think he has 10 home runs this season his extra base power pretty much has been stripped his ops is not nearly the same as it once was and he's just not the quality of hitter that he once was. But can he turn it around at least a little bit to resemble the guy that he used to be moving into 2020? Well, he got $30 million invested in him. Uh, I would hope they'd get the best doctors, the best of everything to, you know, get his uh, chronic knee pain under control and let him be able to so-called stride. I, I've been hearing Dan Dickerson and Jim Price talk about how his swing and his He's been able to drive off that knee better here in the last month, but I don't know. You know, you know, even if they got twenty and ninety from him and and didn't play him as much next year, I think it would be a plus. But for you know the thirty million, you're not going to trade him. So you know, get the best out of him, get the best doctor, whatever it takes, get him in shape. Uh, that's probably their best hope with him. And you can't trade him with that $30 million price tag annually. And it's until 2023 he has that big of a contract. So you're probably not going to move him with that being said. Now, Dad, I'll say this. Maybe I'll have you back on for another episode of Tiger Stock moving forward. I can I can at least say maybe at this point, Dad. I hope so. 203 more episodes. I might be about uh, 80 years old. So, you know, we'll take it from there. Thanks for having me. Bye. All right, Vito, great stuff this week on the podcast. Follow Vito on Twitter at Vito Jerome. Follow the network at Detroit Podcast. We thank you so much for supporting our endeavors. Great podcast this week. Man, can't wait to continue talking baseball with you each and every Wednesday on the Detroit Sports Podcast Network. We'll keep rolling along, John, and in large part due to our great sponsors, right? DC Sports and also the Detroit Sports Commission. Guys, it's been a pleasure and adios. 